thank you, Natalia. The organization has been wonderful. We take guys, we need some good organizers to have to, to make push conferences happen. Well, uh, my topic will be today not about uh, the identity or uh, the European architecture of our, uh, reference framework. We have a lot of talk on AIDAS, but I want to point the attention on something that is essential in the world of operations, right? So I'm talking about kickoff config CLI, but the, the, the talk is even more about how do you operate such a critical component in a reliable way, right? We are trying to get the human factor as far away as possible of operations. That's why in the key clock world also you will find a lot of tools we will see in the next slide that can be used to streamline the configuration, the deployment, and even the operation of such component. A server like key clock is very complex because we have a lot of aspects inside so configuring key clock is a proper science what do you want to do how do you want the people to log in what token do you want to produce clustering everything email and so on and you don't want to be doing this in every staging environment you don't want to restart with this right you want to have a clean version control you want to be able to roll back those components when something is not working uh, secret management, key rotation is still a mystery. Seriously? Uh, yes. We still live in a world where not everything runs on Kubernetes. Uh, we have a lot on bare metal. We have a lot, even some governments don't want you to host the source code out of the country and so on. So there are a lot of options and we still have to be able to use a server like key clock in every single situation and the purpose of configuration management tool is to make this happen right one thing that we really appreciate with the key clock uh, architecture is this great focus on an administration api so key clock exposes an api that you can use to administer key clock this is not the business interface of key clock the business of key clock is authenticating user producing token, but you have to be able to configure key clock. So an administration API may be, it might be a blessing, but it might also be a curse because we start doing self-purpose computer science, right? We have the possibility to just change some information on the real, and then we change it and it stops working, right? So the administration API, of course, protected by an administration account by some clean clients that are designed for the administration. But without a nicely designed administration API, it will be impossible to really do this type of streamlining. So say I start in a development environment, I move into the staging through to a production environment, reapplying the same configuration in each environment. It doesn't mean we're using the same key though, right? But at least we are applying the same configuration because I want to reproduce the same behavior of Keyclock in each of these environments. So we really do appreciate having this administration API. And if you see well, many of the Keyclock tools out there, they go on the administration API. There is a couple of tools that are native to Keyclock, like the Keyclock JSON import export. Uh, yes, but the admin CLI itself is an example that gets delivered with key clock that shows how you can access the key clock configuration through the administration API, right? We have a couple of special world like the key clock Terraform templates, uh, like the key clock uh, Ansible collections, the key clock operator that is provided by Kubernetes. Each of these tools has its advantages. Its disadvantages, of course, on my slide, it looks like the best tool of the world is the key clock config CLI. OK, I work for Adosis, right? But uh, we uh, have that tool as an open source tool. We don't sell it. We use it. We are very, very delighted to have a strong contributor community. Uh, our intention is not to 
sell a tool like that, but it's to service our customer. We are specialized on providing financial sectors institution with application mainly in the German speaking Europe, actually uh, expanding over Africa, a little bit in the United States. But the intention of a tool like this is to really have the community contribute. It's a very difficult to do task because we have to be in sync with the Kicklock deployment. Everything are changing all the time. Every new functionality that comes to Kicklock has to be deployed. And what do we do? We have to modify the Kicklock config CLI to be able to be used to continue administering Kicklock. Something might change in the design of that JSON file of the realm in the realm design. We have to modify it. So we try to consider every single aspect. It's a Java tool, it's Spring Boot, you can deploy it in a proper container, but you have some more flexibility than in a shell script. Generating keys, managing keys, uh, providing some locks that can be used as audit lock afterwards and so on, even have selective access to uh, the configuration. I can decide that a group is administering some client, another group is administering another client and so on. And uh, it supports all platforms. That's the advantage of the Kicklock config CLI. Like I said, the purpose was not to commercialize it, but to show what options you have out there. If you're in the Kubernetes world and you don't have a complex deployment, the Kubernetes operator might be the best of option for you. We have our colleague inside Adosis that use the Kubernetes operator, the Terraform template, right? It doesn't really matter, but when you are in trouble, you have to know that you have tools out there that can take you out of trouble. That's what will not pull the attention on. And operations is extremely essential nowadays. There's a lot of security hacks outside. Cybersecurity is a new terrain for war. And if you are deploying a tool like Keyclock, that is your authorization and authentication base. We are using Keyclock now to provide access to financial services. That's the reason why this organization, the Special Interest Group exists, FAPI, is critical. Then we really have to start looking very closely at all these aspects. We want to be able to push that configuration of Kicklock into a version control system so that we can track what is changing on our configuration over time. When we are migrating from a Kicklock version to another one, let be because of the Java 11 is not going to be supported soon or because there are some security bugs that have been fixed and so on. We might have to migrate the configuration. How do we do it in the right way? The configuration has a lot of ID inside that object model. How do we abstract from those ID and reapply the same configuration? The idempotency, for example, is essential because I will apply something today and it's impossible to always determine the delta. So what do we do? You can send three times the same configuration over there. We will always compare the state of what is in your Kiko configuration and the state of what you want to have now and make sure that that state is applied. So if you apply the same file five times, it doesn't matter. You will get the state that you wish to have. And your truth now is in your version control system, right? We have a lot of tools out there for checking for the compliance, the security of files. Keep your configuration file that you are maintaining in your version control system. Thomas, you told me about uh, something yesterday. What was the tool again that you used to verify the file? I used open policy agent is the configuration of the configuration. For the one on streaming, can you repeat that? Okay. Currently, there is no support for validating a configuration against an existing realm without applying it first. So I wrote a small proof of concept to, that uses Open Policy Agent to validate the configuration in YAML or JSON format against a set of rules to check for some common errors. Excellent. So, like Thomas, because we have a key clock config here, that can allow you really to manage your JSON or YAML configuration, your version control system. Thomas will use the open policy agent 
validate that configuration. So the extensibility is there. You can save the validation report. You can make sure that non vulnerabilities are not inside your system by just turning this configuration of Keycloak that is binary in the database into a declarative file that is in your version control system, right? The statelessness, like I said, again, is essential. The state management is in the system. That means that file, you can take it, compare, and apply it. The learning curve is also trivial because first it's a Java tool. Most of the time you don't have to go in there, but it's easily extensible. But it's about you start in a development environment, clicking around. Even in the development environment, I don't like clicking around. I use some shell script to so use the Keycloak admin CLI and start my Keycloak configuration. But from there, from your integration environment, you can start exporting files that are declaratively the state of your identity provider, right? And that file will be managed throughout your staging. You don't always have the same version in each staging environment or in the production environment, but the version that you have in every single environment is attached to a specific version of your configuration in your version control system, and that is where cyber reliability engineering starts, right? About customization, we have talked, so I will leave the rest of the time for some questions. If not, the tool is existing at the Adorsis repository, github.com slash Adorsis. You can check it out, get a look, and if you have any question, there's a great community there to support you. Any question? Why not? Could you please explain a bit on automatic state management? You mentioned how that's happening in the tool. The, the, the automatic state management is about not trying to track what you have done inside Kiklo. We don't only check new objects that you want to put in the configuration, but we can detect something you have deleted in the configuration or you want deleted. So we let Keycloak itself manage its state. So we try to compare the realm configuration you have in your version control with what you have in Keycloak. If something is missing in our version, we tell Keycloak to delete it. If something is missing in Keycloak, we tell Keycloak to create it. If something has changed, we tell it to modify. So we don't need to track on our side what has been done. That file is stateless. That is the state you want, and you can apply it anyhow. That's also what brings the idempotency. potency, right? If something is already created and you want me to create it again, I ignore it because it's already over there. It was the second finger. Yes, you. Um, I have a question about bootstrapping. So first of all, a bunch of our customers use this tool. They really love it. But one of the questions that comes up is, I've got an existing Keycloak installation. It's configured. I want to bootstrap the file that, that I'm going to use to subsequently edit. And right now the process is use Keycloak export. Prepare that export file for use with Keycloak config CLI. Do you have a better recommendation for starting with an existing Keycloak, bootstrapping the file that you will use subsequently in Keycloak config CLI? I'm thinking about things like Terraform and Terraformer, which gives you the ability to output the current state of something. Uh, thank you. Actually, we don't have a better way of doing. We start really with exporting Keycloak. What we are working on now is uh, trimming out environment-specific information like IDs, but it's tricky because some objects in Keycloak are connected by IDs, some key IDs that's going somewhere and so on. Uh, what we have is the ability, like you know, to add a lot of environment properties using many way of passing and reading environment online. We are working on automating that so that during the export, you can say, I want the SMTP server to be parameterized. I want the key generation to be parameterized and so on. But we still start with the export. We haven't worked much on that. We have worked much on saying, you make that export, you have a snapshot in the, of the repository or from there, you do the evolution, right? Mm -hmm. we, we, we will appreciate any contribution in that direction. Yes. Next question. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Francis, for this presentation. Uh, my question 
Can you speak up a bit? Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Francis, for your presentation. Uh, my question will be about uh, the drawbacks of your uh, tool. I mean, in your presentation, when you compare the tools, there was no drawbacks. It's like perfect. Is it so, really? It 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 is. Uh, for example, I have one yellow face on the tool, the keystone management, right? It's also not perfect in the tool. It's the only one that I really had here. Like I said, it looks a bit biased. Uh, I'm also someone that always look for the drawbacks, but really, uh, I don't. Uh, it's if you do it badly, you destroy your environment, right? I advise you to have a version control system and to pull it from the version control and apply it. That means you can use it to chill your environment. That is one of the danger. It doesn't check if what you are doing is correct or not. It just applied that JSON or YAML to KeyClock, right? Yes, that is maybe a drawback. We don't check the integrity, the semantic of the file. Yes. It was on this side? Excellent. Oh, okay. First, the gentleman, and then... Um, I was wondering, uh, we are using Kiko config seal already. Um, and I was wondering, can we uh, change the master realm with a team? Like, is it... Usually, it's not advised to change the master realm with imports or anything. Could I change it with the Keycloak CLI too? Yes. Okay. And uh, I think I have a second question. Um, you always need to have an admin account defined for Keycloak Config CLI to work. Um, is there any idea when, uh, for example, later there is a talk about declarative Keycloak um, configs? Um, is there any idea of integrating that into Keycloak or anything like that? We would gladly want to give it to Keycloak if Keycloak wants to take it. Uh, <laughs> we, we hate code because it has to be maintained, right? Mm -hmm. We have people who, we pay to maintain it. And if the community ever takes it over, we'll gladly donate it mm -hmm. and keep using it or that the government governance of the Keycloak community will gladly donate it tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. And uh, concerning the mastering and the admin account, don't forget that you can define segregated account. I even wrote it here, but all of them support that because the admin CLI interface. So you can segregate the account that does some work there and define what that account can do and what the account cannot do. Of course, yeah. Okay, thank you. Next one behind him. Uh, hello, uh, I have a question. How I get attention for a yeah. for a pull request? Um, get the attention. If you have any pull request there that was not addressed, uh, meet us in the CNCF Slack because I'm more active in the CN Slack, CN, CNCF Keycloak WoW 6 Slack than in the, in the, in the Keycloak project, in the Config CLI project. If you write anything there, I will react and make sure that it gets addressed. Okay. Okay. We have uh, one question from the internet, um, from the wall. Our, um, any good tool that would be able to apply patches to existing configurations instead of the full configurations, which might differ between installations? Can you repeat it again, Sebastian? Um, if I have an existing installation and want to apply patches, configuration patches to an existing installation, how do I do that without overwriting everything? Oh, Keycloak supports, uh, uh, the, the admin CLI supports, uh, partial updates. Oh, okay. So I must not always send a whole real JSON over there. I can, if it's a client, I can just send the client, the, the, that means here I support partial updates. So you can really just send the command and the click config here also support that. So I can just send this chunk I want to modify over there without touching anything else and it works. Thank you very much. Uh, wonderful having you here in Vienna. Have a wonderful day.